my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon. This back here, that's Bernard. He's my October co-host. He doesn't say much. He's just kind of there, but he shows up on time so we keep him around. Today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys and today we're going to be talking about Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. If you've been around my channel for a while now, it probably comes as no surprise that I'm a big fan of Lisa Jewell. At this point, she's one of those automatic buy authors for me. As soon as I know she has a new book out, I grab it. I devour it. I can't put it down. She's just such an engaging writer. And this one was one that I really, really loved. In fact, I feel pretty confident at this point saying that this is one of my favorites that she's put out so far. And uh, I just love that. She has such a high output. There's she's so many books out. And um, I feel like so often she's just upping herself. And that's so fantastic, especially when, I mean, she's been at this for a while. So love that. The covers are always so beautiful. I mean, that's just lovely. Love that for her and for us. Anyway, so uh, I'm gonna tell you a bit about the book. It'll be spoiler free. And then once we get to a certain point, I will give you fair warning before we talk about any spoilers. I promise I do not want to ruin anything for anybody. And I know sometimes I get a little too in depth, but I'm, I'm not gonna ruin it for you, I promise. So, Invisible Girl. We start off and it's Valentine's Day night and we know that something very bad is happening or is about to happen. A young girl's getting followed in the street and we just know, even though we're not told what's happening right off the bat, we know something bad is happening, is about to happen. And then we rewind a little bit and we get to know three different groups of people. The first group is a family and it's Rowan and Kate and their two kids, Josh and Georgia. And Rowan is a child psychologist, and um, he works at a clinic where he helps children deal with trauma. Kate is his wife. She's, I think, a physiotherapist, but at this point she kind of just works from home, writing manuals and books and things like that. The two kids, they're teenagers. So that's one group that we meet. The second group is um, a young girl named Sapphire Maddox. And she's, I believe, 17 years old. And she was at one point a patient of Rowan's. We meet her and we meet her uncle Aaron who has custody of her. Um, her life has been really tough. Her mom died and um, just, things happened and so she eventually ends up living with her uncle in his home and he's he's not much older than her I think at one point it's mentioned he's like about 10 years older than her but he really loves her and he really cares about her and um, he seems like a really great guy the third group that we meet uh, one is a man named Owen pick pick or pick pick Owen Pick, and he is 33 years old. He is a, <laughs> he's a 33 year old man who lives with his aunt. He's had, his mom died when he was younger. He had a falling out with his dad. They're not really on great terms. So he went to live with his aunt and that's not really going great. She doesn't really like him that much, but he's there and she's just kind of dealing with it and they're both just kind of putting up with each other some things you might want to know about owen are that like i said he's 33 but he's a virgin even though when we get to know him a bit you know he seems like a handsome enough man um but he's just got some really dark ideas about women and um that leads him to stumbling upon a community on the internet that is sort of dedicated to, um, I honestly don't know what I can even say on YouTube about this group, but um, incels, which stands for involuntary, involuntarily celibate. And they're a group on the internet that are very angry, very bitter, very dark, um, 
very evil, just a lot of bad ideas about a lot of things. And um, due to circumstances that happened to him, he ends up getting fired from his job where he works as a teacher, a professor at a college, or a lecturer at a college. He gets fired from there and it's because of a way that two women say that he behaved at a dance that they were at and he denies it. He says, that's not how I behaved at all. Um, but you know, they say he did. So he, at first he gets put on, I think suspension and they offer him, you know, if you take a course about learning to deal with these sorts of things, you can come back or we can talk about you coming back. Um, but at this point at the beginning of the book, he's just very angry and he refuses. So <laughs> from there, the book kind of deals with the disappearance of the middle group I was talking about, uh, Sapphire. She disappears one night, that Valentine's night, and it looks like Owen Pick was the last person to see her. And the book kind of is mostly a mystery where it you know, it's not really a thriller, it's more of a mystery where we're unraveling, we're pulling back the layers of the story to find out who did what <laughs> to who. And there are points when you think it could be any number of people. Um, because what we learn about Sapphire is, like I said, she had been a patient of Rowan's. Um, he treated her for over three years, and then he gets to a point where he thinks that... Um, they're probably done. And he kind of sets her free. And from there, just because of the time spent and the traumas that this girl has gone through, we don't know the details, but we know that when she was 10 years old, something very bad happened to her. We eventually learn the details, but at the beginning, we don't know. Um, and she started to self-harm. And so once Rowan says that they're done with the therapy, she starts following him. She wants to kind of find a way to keep him in her life. And um, that becomes a problem. Anyway, eventually she goes missing and Owen was the last person to see her alive. And the police start asking questions um, to the people that live on the street because Rowan and his wife, Kate, they live on a street <laughs> and Owen lives across the street from her and so the last place she was seen was outside of Rowan's house so that looks very suspicious and it leads the cops the cops to questioning both Rowan and Kate but also Owen that's really all I can say about the plot without getting into any spoilers so let me just say that I really enjoyed it. It was kind of more low key than some of her books, like especially The Family Upstairs. I found that to be such like a grand, intense, dramatic story, which I loved. But this one's a bit more realistic, maybe like more could possibly happen um, to anybody. And that makes it extra terrifying. And um, it was just great. It kept me guessing, it kept me reading, it kept me on the edge of my seat waiting to find out. At its core, it's a story about the masks that people can wear in their day-to-day -day lives, the ways that they hide themselves, their true selves from the people, from even the people that know them the very best. It's also about how we can get swept away in our feelings and that those dark feelings that we feel in our lowest moments can lead us down paths that can be very dangerous and make us stray from who we actually are. And it's a good look at how, you know, the obvious answer isn't always the answer. Sometimes you need to dig deeper and find the the real answer and I just I loved it so much so if you like mystery if you like Lisa Jewell I think this would be a book that you would absolutely love so with that in mind we're gonna get into a bit of the spoilers now if I went through everything that happens in the book of course we would be here all night and I don't want to do that to you so we'll kind of just get into just some of the spoilers anyway 
So the story goes back and forth from Owen's perspective, Maddox, uh, Maddox, Sapphire's perspective, and Kate's perspective. And Kate is, of course, um, Rowan's wife, and Rowan is the psychologist. <laughs> um, and so we get the story from all three perspectives. And as we're getting the story, we're waiting for all of the puzzles or pieces we're waiting for all of the pieces of the puzzle to come together because we're getting a bit from their perspective a bit from this perspective and we're waiting for the whole picture to form which it eventually does just seamlessly I, f I feel like Lisa Jewell is just so great at that just weaving a story so well um so yeah you know for the first little bit you think maybe it's Owen he's what you find out towards the end is that Owen is mainly misunderstood, um, both by others, but also by himself. And he grew up with a lot of ideas about what the relationships between men and women should look like. He grew up with a lot of really toxic ideas about women from things that he overheard his father and his mother saying that he later goes on to find out when he finally confronts the father that abandoned him just aren't true. Um, and you know, they were things interpreted by a child that a child should never even hear, let alone have to try to interpret. And you just, you really feel for Owen and the things that he's went through, even though for a brief period of time, he joined the incel community, said some really nasty things. Um, you get the feeling that that's not who he is at his core. And eventually he's, at least for a time, arrested for the potential murder of Sapphire because she's just gone missing. <laughs> As time goes on, you see Kate, because not only has Sapphire gone missing, but on the street there have been a slew of women who have been assaulted, groped, just treated very badly by someone that they can't quite see. He approaches them, sometimes from behind. He's got a mask on, he's wearing all black, and he attacks them. So for a while, of course, we're thinking that that man is Owen. But then as time goes by and Kate tries to start piecing things together after Owen is arrested, she, for a while she's like, oh great, he's been arrested. But then as time goes by, it doesn't sit right with her that that's the guy and one day she finds in her son's bedroom um, behind his hamper there's a bag with a lycra running suit and a mask like a um, ski mask kind of um and the running clothes are his dad's and so she's starting to think that maybe it's her son and then for a while she thinks maybe it's her husband who's doing these things so eventually her son um, goes to the police to tell them that Owen didn't do anything. Um, Sapphire is okay last I saw because as time went on she began to confide a lot in Rowan and Kate's son Josh because they're around the same age. She's a little older but she began to confide in him, told him about what happened to her when she was 10 years old. She was assaulted by a man who was He's a man now, but at the time he was a kid as well, but um, he was a year older. And in recent days, she's seen him sort of creeping around the neighborhood. And so she tells Josh about this, and they sort of begin to form a revenge plot in their heads that they're going to take revenge on this man. So we begin to see that, and so our brains start to think, well, maybe it was him this guy that assaulted Sapphire is now maybe out there assaulting other women. But, um, and eventually he does get arrested because of what Josh tells the police and Owen gets released and he goes on to try to form a better, more healthy life. He moves out of his aunt's place, he gets his own place. He takes the course that his old job wanted him to take and then gets his job back and he um, just he begins to live a more authentic life he confronts his dad like I mentioned earlier 
And so then that's kind of the end of his story. So for Sapphire, she eventually comes forward after she learns that Owen's been released from jail and that the man that assaulted her has been arrested. And then what really got to me was how the book ended. <laughs> so it kind of ends with leaving us with a feeling that maybe it was Rowan all along who had assaulted those girls. Um, at one point, or actually right at the very end, um, it's Josh talking to Sapphire and um, they're talking about when they were sort of working together with the revenge plot to try to hunt down the guy that had hurt her and she says how one night Josh came over wearing um, the running clothes that his dad owned which is what Kate found in his room so that's that's when he had worn it when he went to go and help Sapphire and she's got the ski mask and she says you know where'd you get all that and he says oh I found it in my dad's drawer so the ski mask the dark clothes all of the things that the girls described about when they had been attacked you know Josh comes over to her house wearing um and so when he says he found it in his dad's drawer it kind of it's the very it's the second last line and it just makes your blood run cold and uh i loved that i loved it kind of ending in such an ambiguous and terrifying way and even before that because so much is uncovered about rowan he's having an affair he's some really nasty things come to light and um Sapphire has a moment where she reflects on these new things she's learned about Rowan and she's just really horrified that someone who their job is to care for and help fix the trauma that children are going through is someone that's so dark and um, deviant and it's just it's a really chilling a revelation that she has and it's so true it's so true like you don't know who you're dealing with and what kind of person they are behind closed doors it's just that sort of you know um reminder that everyone's you know how well can you really know another person everyone's kind of just a stranger <laughs> And that's kind of grim and kind of bleak, but here we are. <laughs> anyway, you guys, I really enjoyed this book. It's, like I said, one of my favorites, if not my favorite, that she's written so far. So let me know in the comments down below if you've read this book, what you thought of it. If you haven't read it, do you plan on reading it? Do you like Lisa Jewell like I do? And uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I will see you again maybe before but definitely on monday <laughs> if not before definitely monday with a new vlog thanks for watching you guys if you like this hit the thumbs up button and do subscribe i put out book content every week and uh i'd love to have you bye guys <laughs>